announcement. Hey, stewards, we got some big news for our Patreon. We are now going to be doing exclusive Q&As that are only coming from our Patreon subscribers. So if you've had a burning question for us to answer live on the pod, get onto our Patreon. You can drop your question right in the messaging board and select questions will be answered directly on air from the podcast. So make sure you get onto our Patreon, subscribe, right. drop those questions in there, and we will answer them on the pod. Yes. We love you, stewards. Let's get into it. Cheese. Folks, welcome or welcome back to another episode of Good Service. We are your host, Ben. And Kevin. And uh, we have a very special guest today in the pod. We have producer, writer, director. He's the founder of Whoa. Three Ring Circus, Whoa. a Los Angeles-based creative branding agency that helps create brand Whoa. strategy for top networks such as ABC, Fox, Warner Brothers, just to name a few. But most importantly, he's a man of God and a prayer warrior. We have John Amen. Sideropoulos. Wow, thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're making me sound really important. You're very important. <laughs> You're very important. Man, Welcome to awesome, Good Service, man. John. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Thanks, guys. We have a lot of really cool things we want to talk about. But before we do that, we get into our food. So today we yeah, are nice. enjoying some amazing Hawaiian plates from Ono Hawaiian Barbecue. We hit up the one that is local to us here in Gardena, California. And so we have their lemon pepper chicken with cabbage with along with their teriyaki chicken and cabbage. Mm -hmm. And this is their mixed Hawaiian barbecue plate. It has Korean barbecue short ribs. Mm. I think that's bulgogi. And that is chicken teriyaki with Ooh. their mac salad and their rice. So, yes, we got you know, their full spread today. You just gotta love today. the Hawaiian lunch plate. Gotta yeah, love the so Hawaiian good. lunch plate. So, so before, we, nice. before we um, get into the conversation, we have what we call a first bite reflection. And um, <laughs> what we do is, you know, before I get here, you know, I do some homework on our guests. We kind of like prep with, you know, what this person does, what the background is. And then I just pray, pray over the guests. And so today I was praying for you, John. And well, for one, when I found all this stuff that you actually do, because context of when I met you, which we'll get into in a second, mm. you know, I, I figured like, oh yeah, this guy must be like in full-time ministry. He's probably like a pastor or something yeah. like that. And then, you know, when I like, <laughs> you know, pulled yeah. up the wonderful interwebs and Googled you <laughs> and I'm like, wait, this guy's like in the entertainment industry. And, um, you know, you do a lot of really cool things in the entertainment space. But then I also had the context of how I met you. Mm. And so as I was praying for you, yeah, I was just asking the Lord, like, you know, what is the way that you want us to kick off our conversation? It took me a bit to find it. I think when I met you and how I perceived who you were then to mm -hmm. like doing a little bit more research, I'm like, wow, this guy's totally not somebody that I would have imagined is in that space. And so mm -hmm. I felt like the Lord gave me a question. Uh-oh, here we which go. Which is, yeah. Um, yeah. we'll have some time to, to chew on this one, because okay, this okay. one might Literally. have some layers Literally. to it. Okay. Might have yeah. some layers Prepare to, to it. edit all that silence. <laughs> so, I feel like the Lord wants us to begin our conversation with, what is something that not a lot of people know about you, but you think God might want to use by you letting people know? Whoa. So, Whoa. what is something that <laughs> not a lot of people know about you, hmm. but you think God might want to use by you letting people know? Whoa. I know that one goes pretty deep. Yeah, I so, have to, uh, I'll yeah. have to uh, think well, we about can that. chew on yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna chew on the yeah. question. I'm gonna prep my we teriyaki do a little air chicken. dab like yes. this. Little cheers, air dab. cheers, cheers, cheers. Mm. Oh, there we go. Oh, I see. Cheers. Okay, all right, nice. Yep. All right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I love Hawaiian barbecue, man. Tastes man. good. Mm -hmm. Hawaiian barbecue. Thank you, guys. Good it's, food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like a subtle, sweet, savory, you know what I mean? I love it. Oh no, Hawaiian shout out. I know some folks that works over solid. there. Solid. Love y'all. Solid, solid. So good. What is something that not a lot of people know about you, but you think God might want to use by you letting people know? Hmm. Wow. wow. And whoever has it can start it. Whoever has it can start it. Well, one of the things that kind of stuck out right away when he mentioned that is that been having a hard time that God actually wants to give us the desires of our heart. Hmm. And that's something that he keeps bringing up i don't know if you guys wow, heard of that man. before wow. that god actually wants yeah our desires to be expressed yeah it's like if you were a dad you want your kids you know whatever it is that they really their ambition mm -hmm. you want it you want to see them mature and grow into sure. that yeah so i've been 
understanding more and more about the ultimate expression of my desires is really an expression of God's love for me. Ooh. And it comes up against, I think, maybe for all of us, a certain level of unworthiness. We're yeah. not worthy of such deep love, you know? Yeah. So for me, one of the things is um, I've always had this desire to make films that are that I can be proud of, quality yeah. films that also, uh, you know, are positive in the sense that they express God's love for humanity, you yeah. know? So that's still a desire, and that's something I'm still working towards, but even though I've been in the entertainment business all my life, that wasn't the section that I was connected mm. with. I was, yeah. even, I've done a couple of films, done some short films, but my main client base and networking has been primarily TV networks, TV shows, mm, sure. completely different world. Yeah. So that's something that kind of came up when you mentioned mm. that question. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it opens up the door to other discussions like mm. unworthiness and things of that sort that- Wow. Wow, that definitely Might make I, sense. Yeah, absolutely. There's something that you said that I want to put a pin in, and I'll bring it up in a second. Yeah, I think when you say unworthiness, that I'll say mine's pretty close to that. I think there's something that not a lot of people may know about me. I mean, God uses all things for His glory. Mm -hmm. You know, He uses the good things, the gifts that He's given us, and then He can even use our shortcomings and our sin to, for His yep. glory. Yep, <clears throat> true. And I think for me which is actually, we talked about this when I met you, which uh, we'll get to in a second. But I think something that people may think about me, because, you know, social media is, um, it's like a funny thing. You just see what is posted. You see, you know, we call it highlight reel, or we call it just like the curated, you know, what you want people to perceive you as. Mm -hmm. You know, when people follow, you know, influencers or people, you know, that we admire on social media, we think that, man, their life looks so polished and mm. they're always having fun and, you know, they look like they got their stuff together. You know, we kind of just like leave it at that. But I think for me, and this podcast is actually a, a big window into my life where I'm like, that's not actually who I am. You know, <laughs> who I am is is someone who is broken and, and still being healed by the grace of God. And I've learned that healing isn't always a one-time event that's linear. And once like it's done, like there's no more remnant of the thing that you've been healed from. Like mm -hmm. that's not often the case. Mm -hmm. And so I think something about me is that I'm still broken and I'm still insecure. And how I think God wants to use that is because I'm pretty sure other people out there are broken Amen. and insecure. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. true. And, and don't feel like they have this trajectory that just keeps on the up and up, but it teeter totters. Yeah. yeah. And that's not in any way to glorify a life of insecurity or glorify a life of brokenness. It's just to recognize that's why we need Jesus mm -hmm. desperately daily. Mm -hmm. yeah. The concept of daily bread is not only just our daily provision for our, mm -hmm. our sustenance, but a daily need for him. If we felt we had our stuff together, then why would we need God? Like, hey, I'm fine as I am. I don't need help. Right. And so... Yeah, I think that is something that for me is, like, yeah, that, that I still struggle with a lot of insecurity yeah. and my brokenness is still being healed daily. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. When I thought of the question, like when you first hear a question like that, like what is it something that God wants you to share that is a part of you that could really impact and influence? Like the first thing my brain or my flesh is trying to do is start listing my accolades, right? Mm, it starts to yeah. go, mm, yeah. oh yeah, look how good I am at mm. this or that or the other, or look at this cool secret project that nobody knows about. Let me shine on it so mm. I could showcase the excellence of what God's people are doing. But like, just like Ben, how he just shared and kind of like how you were sharing about the desires that you have and the shortcomings of that desire. I think what I found even more powerful um, when I get the opportunity to connect, it's not just to shine the accolades, because I think there is power in that too, of yeah. like yeah. doing something awesome and thinking, whoa, that dude loves Jesus and he like climbed Mount Everest or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean like that that is cool. Cause yeah, then it's definitely. like, totally. cause then you can go after your desires mm -hmm. and actually accomplish things with Jesus, right? right, right. But then that there's power in that, but something that's more deep, that I've seen that really grabs the attention of many or even like almost like hooks them for years is mm -hmm. when, for me at least, when I met someone and that was willing and open to be vulnerable about something painful, 
Mm -hmm. And yeah. so for me, I think I've shared a little about, about this in the past, but something that I love to, or not love to, I don't like, I don't love <laughs> to share this, I guess, but something yes. that I've had some incredible conversations around is for a very long time since my adolescence, I struggled with a very deep depression mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. I'm a very happy person. When you mm -hmm. meet me, I'm very mm -hmm. joyous. Mm -hmm. I carry mm -hmm. so much joy in my demeanor. I have a yeah. sense of humor. I like cracking jokes. I noticed that. And, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like, you know, I kind of yeah. like busting people's balls a little yeah, bit. You know, yeah, like yeah. I like, you that's know, good. saying yeah. things and ribbing them a little. You know, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. That's part of my personality mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I'm always trying to, where it stems from is I used to try to bury my fear, anxiety, and depression with false, shallow joy. Mm. And it wasn't yeah. from God. It was right. just, I was trying to cover the pain. Band-aid, yeah. It was a band-aid. And for the longest time, I used to even have crippling days where I would look busy, but I'm actually doing nothing. Mm, just to fake it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would do nothing for wow. weeks. Wow. Where it would feel like I would get dressed, I would go outside, and mm. I would just not be able to do anything. Wow. And mm. I just thought, this must be what other people do too. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I, I didn't yeah. know i didn't know yeah like how severe it was i didn't know how bad it wow. was i didn't know how crippling my anxiety was i just thought that it would just never get better and wow. i think i faced it alone so many years because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i wanted to look successful i wanted to right. chase clout i wanted to be strong you know yeah. as a man so i knew that if i shared this with too many that I would be seen as incapable. Yeah, I would be seen as or, yeah, yeah, untrustworthy. Mm. And trust and respect teeter that line. So I would lose respect of others. Mm. And I didn't want that. And I was like, you know what? No, no, no. I yeah. want to be the guy, the go-to guy. Yeah. So I have to <sighs> hide this shameful thing. And I have to sit in a deep, dark well by myself. Wow. And mm. I did that for years. And I didn't even know how to bring that up even with God. Wow. And wow. I yeah. think what was beautiful, though, in the last two years is as Ben walked with me on, on this incredible journey that God had, like took my life, he in one incredible swoop took it away. Mm. Hmm. And it wasn't wow. like here's like poof, like it's gone. But it was just look at me. And that's mm -hmm. all he wanted from me. He just said, look at me. His joy and his love was so bright that my darkness wasn't as bad. Mm. And it really felt like that. So I might be in a well sometimes, some mornings, some mm -hmm. days. This morning, this morning, man, I had anxiety coming, just mm. waking this up. This morning? Yeah. Wow. But God's given me some tools. Mm -hmm. I sat down. I started to pray. I started to just be grateful for every little thing and reminded me of what life is just today. Wow. And That's in cool. my gratitude... The light just gets bright enough that I can get up. Mm. You know, that's, that's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's been a one day at a time thing. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of days are easier lately. I mean, that's just like being that. honest. It's been a lot easier. Yeah. Well, that's moving towards victory, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in Wholeness. so it doesn't happen all the time. But it's definitely mm. something that uh, man, I love to sit with people and talk about that because it's uh, that's cool. Yeah. It's a place where there feels like there's no hope, but I don't have to sit in that despair. Yeah, mm. yeah. that's great. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I'm impressed that both of you guys are so open. I'm also finding that I think your generation and is much more open about it than, let's say, my generation. Mm. So, so I grew up, I think it wasn't until my 40s I realized, yeah. well, wait a minute, my family was really dysfunctional. <laughs> so I wasn't yeah, yeah. very self-aware of things. Yeah. Yeah. And I know we're going to get into it a bit later, but the whole idea of um, learning about inner healing mm. and what that is and man's brokenness and God's desire. Yeah to heal us in the spirit realm, the, you know, the enemy that we, all that stuff just was, I was blinded to it. Wow. And that opened up, you know, being involved in that the last 20 years or so, yeah. opened up my eyes to so many things. And then of course watching. So it's like God pulling the veil and saying, here's what's going on behind the curtain, John. Mm. And here's how everybody, everybody around you, the multi-billionaires to the poorest man, they all suffer of the same things. Mm. And I want them healed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here's some tools. Let's work together. So it's been an amazing, crazy journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so part of my passion is to really create more awareness that all of us feel empowered and all of us start from the 
the start point is that God wants us healed. He wants us to know who he created us to be, that anxiety, depression mm -hmm. is not part of his plan for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And mistakenly, sometimes we feel, well, this is God's taking me through this to teach me something or any kind of theology like that that I used to entertain mm -hmm. is nonsense. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, right. Yes, there are seasons of our lives that suffering brings things out, yeah. sure. but God didn't create us to live yeah. a life of suffering or That's torment right. or depression mm. or whatever. That's and good. I'm not minimizing people's struggles. So sure. it's yeah. a, it, yeah. these are all loaded uh, subjects. Yeah. Yeah. Lo let's yeah. see where this well, discussion goes. So, we'll dive in. When I first met you, John, was about now four months ago. So there's a, a bit of a backstory that I don't even know if you know this, because I don't think I gave you the context when I came in. Uh, so I signed up for inner healing prayer at Pi Hop and Pi Hop's Pasadena International House of Prayer, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, heard about Pi Hop for actually many years. I just never went to it. And I wasn't really sure what it was. And then, you know, as I've been sharing with some friends in my community in the last couple of years, like, you know, they're like, man, you should really do like mm. an inner healing thing at Pi Hop. And I'm like, what's that? And so I'm like, I mean, it's just sign up for it. And I know that I get to, there's like a wait list for it and everything. Yeah. So I, I emailed the the email address, like mm -hmm. saying, Hey, I, I would love to get an inner healing prayer session. Mm -hmm. And I, I had signed up for it months ago. Right. Like, so I, I totally forgot that I even signed up for it. <laughs> and then I woke up one morning and the morning was May 17th. So that was May 17th of this year. How I remember that was that May 17th is when my father passed away oh, no. in 2020. Wow. So it was the four year death memorial of my dad. Wow. So I woke up that morning to a text from Pi Hop saying, Ben, we have a inner healing prayer session available. Oh, that, was, that was me. Was that you? <laughs> that text, okay. Yeah. yeah. So then the, the day that originally you asked if I was available, I was unavailable. And then the second date um, that you uh, gave me, I was like, oh yeah, I could do that day. And that date happened to be June 3rd. It was at 7.15 p.m. Right. And then, you know, I don't know. I, I feel that like God speaks to me through numbers. I oh, say, yeah, this, yeah, I say yeah. this pretty yeah, often. Yeah, yeah. And it, it just immediately clicked with me that like May 17th is 517. Mm. And then the time that... Um, I was going to meet with you was at 715, which is 715, mm. which was a reversal of 517. Oh, that's right. And then I felt the Holy Spirit mm. in that moment felt like, I, and I feel like this is God because I feel like God speaks to me through like thoughts that are not my own. Like, right. like where did that thought come it's, from? It's a good know? way to put it. And then I felt like the Lord was saying, we're going to reverse generational curse. Mm. And I was like, what? Nice. So I was so like excited and nervous and all the emotions were there. Mm. And I was like, and I just remember like sitting up in my bed and I was just praying. I was like, Lord, I don't know what's about to happen. All I know is that you're in on this. Like this is you, <laughs> you know? So yeah, that's great. Wow. So then, um, yeah. And then when, when I came and I met you there and then um, it was you and there was two other people there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I came in very like, Again, I'm like, I don't know what this what, is. Yeah, yeah. I'm very open. And then I remember you kind of opened it up with like kind of, you know, inviting me to kind of, you know, relax and just kind of lean into the couch that I was sitting on. I forget what like the exact prompt was, but you were, there was something to the effect of like you were inviting me to just kind of sit in a place where I felt mm, like just yeah. at like a lot of peace and a lot of just calm. Mm -hmm. And I and I knew exactly where that where that scene was was because I was like when I when I visited the Grand Canyon, which mm. is actually literally yeah. ten years ago, twenty fourteen. Yeah. I went up to the Grand Canyon with some friends and then I sat on this like um, we crossed one of those perimeter fences that you're not supposed to cross because otherwise you'll <laughs> fall off and oh, no. die. But yeah, we, we ended up doing that carefully and then you know we were like sitting on this this ledge. Oh man, our, our legs dangling off this cliff and you know, I'm terrified of heights. So like that was like, so, yeah, it, it was very like, yeah, I don't want to lean too forward, but I was like, okay, this is pretty wild. But it was at sunset and I remember oh, wow. the sun nice. was going down and then it was just quiet and like none of us were talking. We were just mm. taking in the, um, the sights. And like the sun was setting, the the colors of the mountains were changing mm -hmm. from like red to like purple. And yeah, I just remember yeah, like nice. feeling this like subtle breeze. And I just felt like God was like, I'm here with you. I want mm. you to just experience this. Mm. So that was the scene that I uh, envisioned. Wow. And then you said, invite Jesus into that scene. Right. And then I was like, whoa. 
invite Jesus. And then you're like, let us know when he shows up. What didn't take more than a couple of seconds. And then yeah, I just there. started losing it. I just started wow. the waterworks. And then you were like, I'm assuming he just showed up. <laughs> like, yeah, he's here. That's something I would say. Yeah. And like, I am, I'm getting emotional now thinking about it. Yeah. And like, you know, yeah, basically you were saying like, you know, what's he doing? What's he saying? Yeah. I'm like, he's not really saying anything. He's just like, he just yeah. pulled up next to me and he's just like sitting yeah. next to me. And then there was a moment where I felt like he like put his arm around me and gave me a hug. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, no, I was like, man, he's still not saying anything, but like, it was like the perfect. He wasn't, but he was, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, he no. wasn't telling me words. It was just, he was, he pulled up next to me, sat next to me. He put yeah. his arm around me and he just sat there and, and watched the Grand Canyon with me. That's cool. And uh, I was like, whoa, this is, I've never experienced anything like this before. And so, um, when you were talking about earlier, uh, that, like God loves us so much that he cares about our desire, the desires of our hearts, right. which also means he cares about the wounds of our past. Um, he was present in every one of those um, hurtful mm -hmm. moments mm -hmm. or, you know, those events in our life. Yeah. And um, when you said that, it, it just took me back to that, that image that I had with like Jesus sitting next to me with his arm wow. around me. And I felt without words that he was saying, I've been here throughout all of it. Yeah. And I'm here now. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not ever gonna leave you. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was the, the context of, you know, how I met you. And then I mean it was a powerful session. And um, you know, and I still have the notes that I that I was given from that session. And um That's good. That's good. And I remember there was a few things too, where we we're talking about breaking of generational traumas mm -hmm. and even like behaviors uh, and patterns that have developed in my life due mm -hmm. to a response for like coping. And, you know, even I brought up uh, struggles with alcohol and things like that. Yeah. And like, to be quite honest, it's still been a journey since then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is, but like, I am definitely seeing progress. It's great. And, um, yeah, that that's the 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 context. Yeah, just to refresh your yeah, memory, yeah, yeah. you know, because yeah, that's because yeah. I remember when we spoke on the phone a, a week or so ago. You're like, you're like, no offense, but I don't know if I remember you. Like, can you talk? Can you refresh my memory of like what we talked yeah. about or what you look like? And and I also thought that was really cool. I'm like, wow, like, not that that was cool that you didn't remember, but right, right. for me, it was such this like huge moment. And then for you, I took what you told me is like you were just being obedient to what the Lord was yeah. calling you to do in the moment. And it wasn't this, you, you, you didn't do like a bunch of prep work on me. You didn't do a bunch of homework no. on me, like to get content. You just received me in real time. Right. And then you listened to the Holy spirit yeah, exactly. for like how to, you know, guide yeah. me through that. And so, well, for one, like that was really cool. And, and I've been deep, diving deeper into like hearing the voice of God. Like mm. I just started this uh, prayer cohort called Novo. I don't know if you've heard of it. I've heard of Novo. Yeah, they have a lot of different prayer programs. Cohort. Yeah. They also, I think, promote inner healing. Yes, yes, yes. So I just started this course and um, the last session that we did was like hearing God's voice. And I was like, man, I'm starting to understand how I hear God's voice. Mm. And so I'd love to, um, yeah, just to open it up with you. Like for one, how did you get into that space? I mean, you said you've been with Pi Hop now for about 16 years. You're not officially right. on staff, but like you've no. been a part of their ministries for a minute. Yeah. Um, what drew you to, um, to that, that specific? Space? Yeah. And then like, how have you sort of developed Mm. your understanding of what is prayer what is the power of prayer how do we pray praying with authority um okay that's a lot like, i know yeah, i know we, we we might have like a six yeah, hour yeah yeah, yeah 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 one, one step at a time yeah, bro yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, just, let's, these on. are all thoughts floating around in my head yeah those are all great questions i'll try to summarize things it's interesting to note sideropolis greek name i was actually born in greece um moved to the states in boston when i was about eight mm -hmm. but i was part of this minority church, uh, Protestant church, because Greeks are predominantly Orthodox. My mm -hmm. mother was Orthodox. My father was Protestant. But what was interesting is that our church in Boston, growing up as a teenager there, I mean, they could study 
the Bible in the original Greek, you know? So mm. I come from that kind of depth right. of understanding and good. That's crazy, by the way. So cool. It is pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Not just the pastor, sure, but a lot like, of the congregants. Yeah, the lame, everybody. Mm. They knew, a lot of people knew, wow. you know, they could read it in the original. Mm. So I grew up with a lot of good theology. Then I discovered there was a section of the Bible that just never talked about, and that was the... Corinthians that talks about the gifts of the yeah, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> they skipped that, huh? They would skip that. So when I first heard That's that, I said, funny. that mm. is really weird, right? Mm. So then I started asking questions, and and none of the answers made any sense to me. Mm. At the same time, I, I hate to say it, but our church really looked down upon Pentecostal churches. Mm -hmm. So, same, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. so years later, I've tried a few different times to kind of pursue and learn more and nothing really clicked. About 22 years ago, there was this gentleman, Dr. Emmanuel Ballone. He was studying, getting his PhD in leadership training at Fuller, started attending our church. Anyway, long story short, I said, hey, start mentoring me about the Holy Spirit. I was still mm. hungry because I looked at Christianity and I was taught to believe, just be a good Christian. Yeah, You can't hear God. You're not really significant your business is not significant the only thing that you can do that's significant is do you know come to church on sunday support the church function sure mm -hmm. so that was the whole world that i grew right. up with yeah anyway so in that process he introduced me I, I he had me read a book by charles craft i read a couple of his books and one of them was the first one was christianity without power which really it resonated with me that you know the, he was bringing up the point that Christianity always had this power, but mm -hmm. our church today is not, you know, expressing mm -hmm. that. That's right. That's but right. the book that really changed me was a book called Deep Wounds, Deep Healing by Charles Craft, which was a book on inner healing. Mm. And it opened this world to me. And I said, this sounds too good to be true. Yeah. That Jesus actually can take show you what the root cause of your issue is and that there's That's a demonic right. element that mm. per, you know perpetuates and exacerbates these situations and it just it really triggered and it resonated with the way i think and it opened up like i said earlier this the curtain so you can see behind the curtain yeah and um i started reading like tons of books i went to the bibliography of his books and found all these other people and fast forward i've done like i witnessed a couple of sessions. In fact, I signed up a session with Dr. Kraft. He was there in Pasadena. Yeah. And my wife said, I'll go first. So she took over my session and she experienced exactly what the book was describing. Wow. And I couldn't, I couldn't wait for the session to be over so I could ask her if this was really real, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, fast forward, this mentor again said, hey, there's someone in the church that wants to pray. Why don't you pray for her? I said, but you know, I don't have any training. I've never done this. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I did it. Things were working. It was a bit chaotic. I kept mm -hmm. doing it week after week. And all of a sudden, this whole new world is opening up to me. The world of the supernatural I'm hearing, and I don't even know what it looks like. I really don't know what I'm doing, but it's working. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, about 20, 21 years ago. Wow. Wow. And from there, you grow and you realize that, you know, yes. God designed us to hear from him. So we're all yeah. supposed to hear yeah. from him. And there is no one in the church that's insignificant. It's not just about the pastor's yeah. vision. It's about yeah. what does he want to express through you and through me and everybody else. Yeah. So all of us have the opportunity to get that close to God and to hear from him and, of course, to heal and so yeah. on and so forth. You know, yeah. That gives you a little context. Yeah. I, yeah. I love the way you frame some of the things that you talked about because it brings like definition and context to what people go through. Because like in the short few words that you use, you know, I identify with a lot of that stuff, right? We grew up head knowledge, Christianity was all just words and good boundaries and good hearsay. And then spirituality, oh, get out of here. You can't talk about that. That's mm -hmm. crazy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I was in a Presbyterian um, type church. And when you come from that background, a lot of Korean Americans actually did. And when you come from that background, it's, um, they would coin this word charismatic on anything that seemed too spiritual. Yeah. And they would almost demonize the word totally. where 
if you were to look into that, oh, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Uh, it's cult centric. But the reality it's is, it's weird. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny that <laughs> some of them the, are weird. Yeah, I sure. mean they are. They are. Yeah. I get it. I get it. You know, because there's extremes on both ends for no sure. Offense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No offense to anybody, <laughs> um, or all the offense. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, nah, we would never. We would never. What's interesting is as as I'm hearing that, and I'm like thinking through my own experience, like it's so hard because you do love the people you meet, right? right? You do love some of the people that actually walked you through some hard times and brought context to the struggles that you had at them at those moments. And these organizations produced good Christian products, mm -hmm. good Christian services where I felt like, oh, these people are at least good people and they're trying at least. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I think those are great things, but something about the excitement of the end of your, the tail end of the part where you went through that journey of, oh my gosh, I'm talking to God. Mm. And like how real that, because I get that question so often. I don't know if you do, Ben, but I'll talk about God as if, because I am listening to him and speaking to him. And as I ex express my day to day, immediately somebody will go, yo, like, what do you mean talk to God? Mm -hmm. You know, right, and they'll be right, like, right. wait, 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 wow. how? Mm -hmm. like like what like what do you mean yeah like and it's and it's so awesome actually for me when that happens because then it's like there's curiosity right mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. like perfect let's talk yeah. about it you know mm -hmm. so that's been beautiful yeah I, I mean when you were saying that god wants all of his children to know his voice and it's not for a select few it's not for like the select spiritual elites that get to hear god's voice yeah um exactly without no me thing. ever without me ever putting that sort of language into it i think i actually believe that it was for certain people it was for certain christians like they get to hear god's voice and then others who like may not be for whatever reason chosen by god to hear his voice like the rest of us can't Right, and I used to actually think that till kind of recently, which is really funny. It's to it's, me. No, it's normal. Yeah, it's, and so it's normal. But what I'm learning now is that God wants His children to know His voice. Scripture even says, "My sheep know My voice," and Amen, and yeah. the way that He speaks though is gonna be unique to the person. Some people will hear an audible voice. Some people will get dreams and visions. Some people will get words of knowledge. Some people mm -hmm. will be through nature, you know, some through numbers. Like, you know, there's so many different ways. Right. And, and, and I know someone, you know, who even out there could be like, well, where is that in the Bible? It's like, it's all over the Bible. <laughs> if you look at it, like, you know, God chose to speak through yeah. like a donkey one time, right? Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Does that mean he speaks through donkeys all the time? Yeah. Could. Not necessarily, but right. he could. Like, right. it, it just shows. And then so there were so many scripture references as I was studying through this, mm. like God said, God showed up in a dream, in right. a vision. Um, God said this, God. And then it's yeah. like, well, that's all Old Testament. What about in the New Testament? It's like, with the Holy Spirit, um, you know, like there's dreams and like Jesus encountered Saul on the road to Damascus yeah, and said, I was just like, thinking of that, yeah. like, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You know? Yeah. So it's all throughout scripture. And it it's so weird that there was and still is a like a sect of Christianity that's like, no, that's like this canonized scripture is complete the bible is the, yeah. the the complete word of god it's done that's it's all all god's words are there yeah. and there are no more new words right yeah yeah and i'm like i find that very hard to believe cuz i also don't see how that's very yeah. scriptural like where does it concretely say that yeah and then how do you how do we explain <laughs> what is happening all around us is all of this stuff in our imagination yeah and so the the thing that i'm so like excited about is i think i am learning how god speaks to me mm. that's that's yeah that's perfect yeah yeah, so yeah and i do agree with you that uh actually one of the things when when i'm training people to do inner healing is i tell them that god's going to teach you a language that he's going to use with you that might be different from anyone else and he loves that. He, there's a uniqueness in all of us. So yeah. God treats each of us in a unique way, you know. So, yeah, I, I believe he speaks to us. Uh, he has a lot of different ways he could, but he uses a certain way with each one of us that might be different.
What's up, Sewards? Thank you guys so much for supporting good service. If you guys love what we do, then become a Patreon subscriber. As a Patreon subscriber, you get exclusive content every single week. From Q&As to solo reflection rounds, extended episodes, spicy takes, vlogs, and so much more, you're going to find all of that exclusively on our Patreon. Log on to patreon.com slash goodservice. Thank you guys so much for your support. Back to the episode. I got a burning question for you. So you, 20 years, it's been 20 years now you've been walking with God. In, in this well, new way, in 21, this, 21 in, in years. In inner healing, yeah. Yeah, in inner healing and yeah. this more openness and spirituality, I Def guess. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah. So in your 21 years, in the best words that you could use, okay, okay. <laughs> no pressure. It's going to be a lo loaded question. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just a simple, let's just keep it like, let's strip down and simple. If somebody came up to you today and said, man, how do I hear the voice of God, right? right. What's like a step, like one, two, three, just like a, mm. here's like, where we start. Yeah. Well, I can tell you what I did, kind of using my Western culture, pragmatic yeah. thinking. Well, I think the first step would be to believe that it's possible. Ooh, it's right? good. Mm -hmm. So, because it's all over scripture, you know, yeah. like Ben mentioned. Two, you know, for me, what helped was, okay, how does God speak? So I started reading a bunch of books that people wrote, a mm. lot of their experience. It wasn't until I got to one book that mentioned the way that I was hearing God. So yeah, there's the books about the seer, you know, and, and mm. I, I, I really get fascinated by friends that see things and visually they can interpret things right away Whoa. or the hearing. Mm -hmm. But I found that mine was a knowing. Mm. And I said, yes, that's how it is. When I'm doing sessions, I know something before it happens and I know what God's going to tell this it's person. Wow. It's not a visual. Yeah, yeah. Even good. though I'm a visual person, I come from sure. the entertainment industry. Sure. So I think reading books, seeing how, seeing what's happening, I, I think, look, the Bible is God's word mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's nothing wrong with reading how God is working with people around you. Mm -hmm. yeah. How's God working in the greater church today? What are some of the testimonies? See what resonates with you. Yeah. If you close your mind and say, this is the only way God works, God's okay with that. But mm -hmm. you're limiting God mm -hmm. and you're limiting to what you're going to experience with God. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that, uh, I guess they're called cessationists, yeah. that I found that I don't need to argue with them anymore or try to convince yeah. anyone of anything. Yeah. But if I want to limit God and tell him, you know, Holy Spirit, you can only do this much, then I cannot go to God and blame him if I'm suffering from some disease that could be something that could be easily gotten rid of because it's mm -hmm. generational or it's yeah. the enemy's doing. I think we limit God by mm -hmm. our theology. Mm -hmm. and, and, and God is so deep that to yeah. say it's only the Bible that yeah. if it's not in the Bible, I cannot believe it. That's yes. so ridiculous to me because... Yeah. How can you contain who God is mm -hmm. in a book? Yeah. It's a beginning that brings us into an intimate relationship in, with him, Whoa. into a deep knowing with him where he, where he continues to reveal who he is. Mm -hmm. You know, so, That's such a yeah. deep statement. Yeah. I just, I'm just going to repeat it and I'm going to let you go, man. He, literally, John, you just said, I've never heard that. And mm -hmm. it like blew my mind right now because what, what I really <laughs> believe it. He just said, God is only limited by the theology. Mm. Right. That is crazy. So with that, I, I want to not to not to push back on it, but maybe just to further clarify, maybe because God is the God of the Bible. His character is revealed to us. Yes. Completely in scripture. Yeah. There is no part of God's character that's not in scripture that he will show up and be like, guess what? I'm also like this. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Here's, like, here's something new. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like in that sense, all of yeah. who God is in his character, his heart is revealed through scripture. So that said, when God shows up in a way where it's like, whoa, like this new thing that I've never read in the Bible is happening. This feels like God. You know, we're still called to test every spirit, right? And, yeah, exactly. Is this consistent with the character of God? Does this uh, presence or whatever this experience yeah. is, does this That's bring good you wisdom. peace? Yep. Yeah. Does this bring you yeah, very good. comfort? Or is it bringing you fear? Because right. that's not God. Exactly. Is it making you anxious? That's, that's not, not God. God. Is right. it making you feel rushed and hurried? That's not God. Right. So I think, you know, to say that we can't limit the God 
of the universe to just what's written in the Bible. I think maybe when it comes to events and the ways that something might show up. Right. Because I mean, like, there was no cell phones back then. So like, yeah, can yeah, God yeah, not yeah. speak through a cell phone? It's like, well, where course. does it say in the Bible that God yeah, spoke yeah, through yeah, a cell yeah, phone? Yeah. It's like, because they didn't have cell phones right, back then, right, you know? Yeah, yeah. What so, is a digital church? Right. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. as long as it's consistent yeah. with the character of God, who is revealed completely in scripture, and then, you know, yeah, you, we, we tested by praying like, Lord, is this you? Right, right. And then he'll like tell you, yeah, that's yeah. me. No, I, I definitely agree with that. I think God is consistent. But if you look at, you know, throughout the Old Testament, the New Testament, he keeps revealing himself and moving us down along yeah. the line of who he is. Yeah, yeah. Because he's very much interested. And he is the same loving God, uh, although some people may not see that aspect of him in the Old Testament because mm -hmm. of all the other stuff. There's a lot that we don't understand. It's in there. Mm. You know? But the things that I'm referring to are, well, you can look at great theological debates on both sides of the, let's say we talked about cessationists. Mm -hmm. Some people will argue with you very intelligently that I couldn't respond to them why the gifts don't, you know, are not ah, happening today. Mm. Yeah. On the I other see. side, you have people that will say, no, the gifts are real today. Yeah. So there is one example where we're looking at the same Bible, but we're coming up to different conclusions. So yeah, yeah. I find that mm -hmm. we have to be a little more humble mm -hmm. in our understanding and say, I don't understand everything that's in the Bible yeah. uh, because some of it is really deep and it has, and I think God, I believe, intentionally hides things mm. for those that are prepared yeah. in their heart yeah. to receive more. Yeah. So... We just have to be a little more open-minded is where I'm going. I'm not trying to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. open the all the doors and say, sure, hey, yeah, come yeah, up yeah. with your own theology, do yeah, whatever yeah. you want to do. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, the Bible is pretty solid and pretty clear about, yeah. I think there's enough there for us to recognize God. Yeah. But the intention of the Bible is for us not to limit God, yeah. but to get to know him and get into that relationship mm. with the Holy Spirit. And and you you gave some guidelines. To me, one of them is peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I'm not experiencing the peace of God with something, yeah, that's a good sign for me not to. But if I'm totally oblivious that God's even talking to me and I have a distant relationship with him, yeah, then I mean, then you can't really discern. You know, right. You know. You're just but God's cloud. created yeah. enough within the Bible for us to be in good relationship with him, to have wisdom, discernment, mm -hmm. to know what's mm -hmm. not of him, what what is of him. You know, yeah. something that you said about like not limiting God, that like God um, like salvation happens only in this way. People can only get saved if they hear the gospel preached. That I'm learning. I don't necessarily believe in that because I'm hearing in recent times that like predominantly like Muslim cultures and countries that people are having dreams of Jesus <laughs> and then getting saved, accepting Jesus because yeah. they had a dream. And how is that possible? Like, did That's someone not in the Bible. preach the gospel to that person? They they said, I, I saw Jesus in a dream and he was real. Right. So how do you how do you explain that? Like that there was no missionary that was like, Went here's there, the gospel yeah. presentation. Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? This person just had a dream. So that yeah. that just goes to show however God maybe, and again, I'm not like saying that this is what God was doing, but like in my head, I can imagine God is like, there's no other way that this person's even gonna hear about yeah. me so i have to encounter them in a dream yeah there is something yeah. that yeah, one of our great. yeah one of our previous guests that's been on he's someone uh that's walked with jesus for a really really long time i don't know if you know dave gibbons he was one of our guests but he I'm talks sure. about his favorite characteristic of his relationship with god is just the mystery of god mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah, yeah and he because yeah. he's he just falls so deep in love where the mystery is what he chases and and God ev like forever stays mysterious to him. And he keeps learning more and more. And definitely some of the things that he ponders that he says out loud, he, he's because he uh, used to be the head pastor of a church before. He goes, today, so many pastors would cancel him. Right. Yeah. Because these That's are, the problem with going after the, yeah. those, those deep waters. Yeah, because right? he wants to ponder these things with the Lord. He yeah. wants to question these things. He wants to yeah. push and learn and... You know, he's on his own self journey, but even for him, he says, I am careful who I share what with. Yeah, you have to be. Yeah, yeah. because 
You just don't know. You just don't know. And I could I could see things being twisted for yeah. sure. You know? I mean, there are people out there that are experiencing today the same things written in the early church, you know, in Acts. Yeah, that's right. And probably mainline church would just reject them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it's... The rejection is the tough part. Yeah. It's, it's a tough part. As we're talking about like the mysteries of God, I was, I was thinking about a scripture because I know that there's a lot of scripture that talks about the mysteries of God, but there was, I remember there was a conversation that I had with somebody um, years ago, a long time ago. And they're like, well, what does the Bible say about like aliens? What does the Bible say mm. about like like dinosaurs for real? Like, well, I mean, you know, like, what, right. like show me where in scripture... And like, I mean, so you can come up with so many of those types of arguments. Well, what, is, what does the Bible say about blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, it's not everything is in the Bible, but there was a scripture. This might be it. So this is Second uh, Peter 1, 3, where it says his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to mm-hmm. his own glory and excellence. Right. So. What I, I I would imagine what this says, whether aliens or Bigfoot or the Loch Ness monster <laughs> exists, right. has nothing to do with your life and godliness. Uh, exactly. But all things pertaining to life and godliness <laughs> right. are in here, because that, that it's it's kind of like a You're foolish right. question. Unless the Bible talks about Bigfoot and aliens and Loch Ness monster, I can't believe that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. It's like, right. Oh, what has that got to do with anything? <laughs> right. 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 About your life and godliness. Right. So all things that are actually pertaining to your life and godliness are right. in here. All those other things you can ask God That's when you good. get to heaven. <laughs> and, right, you know, right, right. That might be a right. fun conversation. Yeah. But, or you he, know, I think that's that's the cool thing that's, about the mysteries of God. Like the things that we're supposed to know yeah. that re- are relevant to our lives are in here. I think that's the the pragmatic side mm-hmm. that, that we have to hold on to that, uh, you know. Uh, the, the other, the more the the more mystical things. I mean, there's stuff in the Bible that talks about uh, giants, you know, in the Old right. Testament and yeah. the, the, Nephilim. the Nephilim. And there are people yeah. that are, you know, that have done great studies and research, and sure. or God in your in your hearing, God, mm-hmm. yeah. you can get into a conversation with Him where He reveals things to you. Yeah. Now, good luck with explaining that to other people, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Sure. so there is these opportunities where. You can go deeper with God and he may choose to reveal certain things that are not explained in the Bible. So that's what I'm saying. You have to have an open Mm. mind. But I don't think those fall into the pragmatism of what Peter is talking about. Mm -hmm. So if God reveals something to me about where the giants came from or what the watchers were in the book of Enoch, whatever, sharing that with other people, I have to be careful that, you know, that may not make a big difference in the world yeah. and if god gives me that information i will enjoy it maybe share it with some yeah. people that might but we have to be careful of things that potentially divide us and keep mm-hmm. us from staying yeah focused that's right. you know that's right like what's the purpose of this information yeah, yeah, yeah. things like that no i 100 percent agree because there's yeah. just too much information out there in general <laughs> yeah there's a lot of stuff today and especially with what you guys are doing you know social yeah. media podcasts and such yeah. You, access, you can access so many things, mm. um, which is good. I, I just started listening to a podcast, uh, which is really some old recordings of John Wimber, who started the Vineyard Church. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, he's talking about, you know, his testimony, the just power encounters and stuff. I mean, we have so many things we can access mm. today. It's just yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know? That's yeah. awesome. So I'd love to get into a little bit more um, about Pie Hop. So for those who... Um, I know that there's different chapters, so it's not just a Pasadena yeah. one. There's chapters all around. Yeah, there's well, IHOPs everywhere, yeah. not the Pancake House. Yeah, guys. Not, not not the, the, this yeah. is the International House of Prayer. <laughs> yeah. I think, I don't know what the, so all, it's important to say that all of them are independent. Mm-hmm. So Pie oh, Hop, yeah, got it. the the director is um, Cheryl Allen. Yeah, I didn't know they were all separate from one another. Yeah, I don't know about IHOP Kansas City, whether it has any other associated oh. i don't know but the the term house of prayer has really become popular there's yeah. a bunch of them there might be some loose associations between them but from what i know i know that pie hop is independent i see and um the director is cheryl allen their website is p-i-h-o-p.com pihop.com mm-hmm. and you can learn more about what they have to offer there i highly mm-hmm. recommend the place my position there is i'm a volunteer i run the deep healing prayer 
ministry, which is one of a couple of different uh, inner healing types of ministries that they offer. Mm -hmm. Um, it might be good to kind of give a little context as to what we keep talking about. Yeah, for healing, sure. But I was about to ask you to get into that. Get into yeah. that, yeah. Uh, so so my relationship with Pi Hop is for about 16 years, volunteer. I run the Deep Healing Prayer Ministry where I train people. We have about six, seven, eight teams, a bunch of trainees, and the demand is great. That's why it took, <laughs> unfortunately, it took so long mm -hmm. to wait. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to reduce the demand. If anyone is interested in learning how to do inner healing, uh, please reach out to me. You can reach me through pihop.com. Um, we, we can talk more about yeah, how to reach yeah, we'll me. But that in the notes. Yeah, so, so basically a little bit about inner healing and why it intrigued me is that there's different types of healing that God does. And first of all, I have to say that God is not limited how he heals. So I'm not putting God in a box and saying this is the best way he's yeah. going to heal you. Mm -hmm. uh, but God is very intentional in wanting us to be healed and wanting us to understand our true identity and to live from that place of true identity. Mm. So what's remarkable about inner healing prayer, the type that I do is called deep healing prayer, but there's different types, is one that it, it, the focus is healing of the heart. Mm. The heart is the most probably important element. The brain is really obviously very, very important, but if the heart disagrees with the brain, guess mm. who wins? It's, it's, it's the heart. <laughs> That's what branding is all about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's how does this particular brand make me feel? Right, and I'm right. willing to pay more for an equally qualified or, you know, product that's the same quality yeah. but if it has this brand on sure. it. Yeah. So it's the heart, right? Mm -hmm, I mean, yeah. we all understand that. So inner healing, really the focus is to bring healing to the heart mm -hmm. yeah. and also to correct identity. What are the lies that I believe about my identity? Mm. And what are the lies that then I believe about God? Mm. So it has this component of the healing, uh, bringing to light my true identity. What are the issues that, you know, I'm really, that, I'm, that might be hidden to me. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other component. It deals with the enemy. So there's the, the component of deliverance. Mm. So what I love about the, the two Two things that I love about that, that attracted me to inner healing is that one, God reveals what's going on. Yeah. He'll show you what are the areas that you need to be healed in, mm -hmm. what are the lies you believe, and here's what the enemy is doing. Right. Now mm. that to me was very intriguing. Yeah. yeah. I was always fascinated by the enemy. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not supposed to be real. And then, of course, he gives us the, the, the authority and the tools to break the strategy of the enemy. But what we can't do, which leads me to the most important thing I love about inner healing is, even though we may understand that we have issues of unworthiness or rejection yeah. or whatever the issue, low self-esteem, yeah. you described it perfectly. What if when you go to your therapy, Jesus shows up as the therapist? Right. Mm -hmm. He's the one that made me. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way that I can fabricate that experience that you had. Mm -hmm. So inner healing is someone like me is invited to partner with him. And he says, John, I'm going to equip you and I'm going to help you to understand how this works. But here's the key thing. I promise you that I'm going to show up when you show up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to enhance their ability to connect with me for yeah. that moment wow. so I can minister to them deeply. Wow. So what you've experienced sitting at the edge, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, over uh, the, the Grand, Grand Canyon, Canyon yeah. Jesus coming and just sitting next to you, he didn't have to say anything to you. Mm. That's what really fascinates me and humbles me that I know I can show up, you know, I'd usually minister Monday and Tuesday nights. He's going to show up. All I'm doing is facilitating, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I've learned our language so I can be a good partner with him, you know, good sure. collaborator. Sure. Mm -hmm. But the key ingredient, the key sauce, the secret sauce, Jesus shows up and he ministers to those people. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm just trying to keep up with what he's doing. Amen. That's the mm -hmm. thing that makes inner healing powerful. Yes, I'm fascinated that he... He's given us authority to get rid of the enemy. I'm fascinated that the whole strat. You have people that have been going to therapy for years. You have yeah. people that have struggled for years. Yeah. And they come and sit with you for one, two hours. And all of yeah. a sudden, God just lays on them. Here's the issues. Here's how I feel about you. <laughs> yeah. And yes, wow. we can get rid of this. We can do something. That is like remarkable. You're changing the trajectory of someone's life. And, and, right. and what you were saying, God was basically saying to you, hey, this is the trajectory of your lineage, and I'm going to use you to stop it right here. 
Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Wow. And this is the kind of power that we have access to if we tap into what God is doing That's rather right. than fighting over theology. That's right. That's right. So to me, there was a lot of things that I didn't understand that my theology didn't agree with. But because I was experiencing it, it opened my eyes mm -hmm. to saying, oh, I can't limit God with my false theology. That's right. He can heal anyone any way he wants, and he can give me authority to break the strategy of the enemy yeah. in someone's mm, life. That's right. you know? yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that yeah. has come out of that. And, right. you know. yeah. yeah, and it's crazy because in the past, if people would talk about this, I'd be like, nah, no way, no way. Right. But <laughs> there's just been too many times mm -hmm. over these last few years of just witnessing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just experiential knowledge, right? Experiential knowledge. Yeah. And it's just insane. Yeah. And we've been in each other's like lives now for a little over maybe two, two, almost even three years mm -hmm. now. So like as I walk with Ben, and what's nice is like it's a gift when you get to walk with people. And, oh, definitely. We can't do it alone. Yeah, yeah. And it's so cool. And I had this epiphany. Like it hit me. It's one of those light bulbs. Uh -oh. I love those, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. it's one of those God light bulbs that went off. And it went off on last week, last week. And I've been walking uh, with a few folks in my life and there's somebody that's I'm, I'm kind of like mentoring through a project. And it just hit me after the phone call and I was just driving in silence and God was just kind of revealed something really simple. It's the passage in Matthew where when there's two or more mm. that Jesus is among us, right? Definitely, yeah. And that simple statement that he's among us when there's two or more. I thought, I mistakenly thought when people share that, they usually share it associated with prayer. Usually the, that that passage being taught to me, you know, someone would say that uh, verse and then let's pray, right? That's usually the immediate after yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're trying to amplify the belief in prayer and like dampen the flesh, increase the spirit for the prayer. Yeah. So in my mind, I associate it with prayer. That's interesting. But then I realized mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as I'm walking with all these people that love Jesus, every time I even pick up the phone, every time I hang out like this, Jesus is here. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just for prayer, right? Mm -hmm. that's, right. That's, that's, yeah. that's cool. And that's it cool. hit me so hard as I was driving home and I realized, and I suddenly got even more excited on yeah. these human connections that I have. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. every time I pick up the phone, now I'm not excited just to catch up. I'm just excited just to hang out with Jesus. Mm. Amen. That's good. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And it yeah. hit me so, it was so good, man. Every call, mm. every time I get to, yeah. when I call Ben, it's like Jesus yeah. picking up. Mm. Yeah, Same yeah, thing. yeah. That's a good it's way. No different. Yeah. I like that. I you like know? that concept. So yeah. cool. I mean, there's, there's so much power in, you know, when we like do things and we're not sure what's happening. Cause you know how even when you were saying like, <laughs> yeah, you were, yeah. you were doing, you're like, I'm not really sure what I'm yeah, doing, but yeah. it's somehow working. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, exactly. God can use that. Yeah. yeah. And then God can also use when you are <coughs> equipped and you know you are, yeah. and you are confident, not mm. in like, oh, I have this like ability, but you're confident right. like, oh, yeah, I understand how this works with me and God now. Right. And it's, it's an identity thing. Like, you know, right. you can kind of, mm like show up and kind of like get lucky a bunch and like i don't know what i'm doing it's just i just keep scoring somehow and it's right, like right, I don't know, right. it's like no i'm actually a basketball player and i right. and i and i take on that identity right. that's why i'm able to score like this so it's mm, it, it's it's a yeah. slight change in like god can use the the person who kind of doesn't know what they're doing right but like there's something more in that like but when you know this yeah. is who you are when you know that i've given you this authority yeah I can use that in a sharper way. And I, and I what I also realize is that a, a lot of times the us hearing yeah, obviously God wants us to hear his voice mm. for us. Mm -hmm. But so often he wants us to hear his voice for others as well, yeah. Right, yeah. to bless others, right? You know, mm -hmm. like when you get like a word of knowledge, you know, when mm -hmm. you when you pray over somebody, it's like, "Hey, like, you know, again for me, I think the way that God speaks to me is by giving me words." Mm -hmm. Um and I'm like I don't know. I'm getting this word warrior. I don't know if that like means anything to you. Right. And then and they're like, whoa, I've actually, that's been, great. That's been spoken over me a few times. And like, that's really encouraging. Cause I've been praying about what that is. And I'm like, cool. And it's yeah, not like, yeah. Oh yeah, see, I got it. I gave you a word, yeah. bro. Yeah, right. Yeah, but it's yeah, more yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, Hey, yeah, yeah. praise God. That's like, funny. Yeah. Like yeah. that, that God used me yeah. to bless you. 
you know, yeah. and and I think that that kind of like heart that. posture, and I think going back to earlier when we saying like the charismatic stuff, where we say that's a little kind of ick, is because a lot of it is abused for like self glorification, and yeah, like or, you know people like yeah I'm the healer guy like who needs right, who right, needs right, a right. word yeah. of prophecy it becomes like a point you know? and shoot right, or right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah 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 and yeah. I think that's where we're the not, abuse we're not wizards you know <laughs> it becomes right. a it becomes a process <laughs> no look I, I, just to be clear I I really don't have a problem with charismatics no, 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 no. I, it's I a different it that, no no oh, i'm yeah. not saying you guys uh-huh. were but i'm just saying just for the people that sure. are yeah uh, it's just a different culture you know so some sure. people like going to a high church like a presbyterian church yeah. some people like to meet in a in a cinema it's all different preferences but i like the theology mm-hmm. and I, I you know i believe the theology yeah. so just culturally you may like different type of worship you know yeah. it's, it's yeah. just a different cultural background that i yeah. grew up yeah. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I like I like what you're saying. I, I you know, is that we discover our identity. We walk into it. How we discover it could be like me. I, you know, someone giving you a book and reading and it resonates, and you jump in because you haven't had a chance to get trained, mm-hmm. but because that's who God made you. So it, you know, we start putting the pieces together. So now God's given you this gift. It has to be relevant to where he's taking you. It's part yeah. of your identity. So right I don't have to guess, does God want to speak to me? Well, he's given me this gift. So that means there's more. There's more. Yeah. There's more. So you can be expecting more and more and more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what I love about God. He doesn't put limits on us, you know? Yeah. So yeah I love, yeah. And I want to really emphasize, as you were even describing all the things you were, there's a couple of things that I really like to like bring it back is you said you're watching Jesus do his thing, mm-hmm. but you're just trying to keep up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. such a place of humility, knowing that this really isn't me. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, you're just there. No, that is cool. You know, that's so cool. Which, which is really amazing because it kind of goes to what you were saying that when the two, three of us are gathered, mm-hmm. it's the whole idea that we are all in one. I mean, he talks about in John 15 that he is the vine, we are the mm-hmm. branches. There's this, mm-hmm. that's something that we need to be reminded. I know God reminds me of that sometimes because I feel. Uh, <laughs> but I am always united with him, Amen. you know, so I'm always united with him. So really what he made me understand is that in a sense, what I am is he's given me this opportunity to be a portal. Mm. So when I meet with people, I know they're going to connect deeply with Jesus, depending where they're at and what he wants to do with them. And it's nothing to do with me. But he told me, John, you are like a portal. We're a gate. Yeah. And I'm using this specifically to speak identity into people and to bring healing to people. So that's kind of what he's told me I am. So now I can walk with confidence, mm. humility. I think the problem is when God brings us to that point, we no longer we no longer need to be worried about humility. We need to be worried about diving in deeper. Mm. And mm. honestly, that's I feel like I'm not wow. saying I'm the, I'm not saying I'm the humblest pe- person what I'm trying to understand is that try to understand what I'm saying is that where I'm being challenged is that God wants to empower me more, empower wow. me more than what I'm able to handle. See, wow. we we think because I think it's our, our bringing our theology is that Moses, you know, those people are there. You cannot do what you know. Stay low. God is saying, I mean, if we look at the end of the book, the end of the book says that all the earth has been restored. Yeah. How is that going to happen? Yeah. We have to grow. Yeah. We have to start preaching the wow. gospel that God wants to empower us. He wants us to be wow. involved in social media and yeah. business and everywhere. Yeah. We got to break off this church model because yeah. it's not very efficient. The majority of the world is outside the church. We're That's reaching right. a very small portion. Right. And it's all about exhibiting God's nature, which is what? To heal to do this, to do that, to transport people from one location. Everything that happened in the New Testament, <laughs> right, right. it needs to explode oh, beyond man, that, you know, those levels. You know? oh, it, so man. it's not like I'm chasing wow. the supernatural. I just don't want to limit God. And wow. I feel like God is pushing me. There's more, John. Yeah. There's more, John. Because yeah. I want to There's restore more. all the earth. And, and, and I think, honestly, it comes down to it's written, but it's hidden in there. Yeah. Become like me, become Jesus like. We are what? We are made in his image. We are children That's of right. God. He yeah. doesn't say that of the angels. So mm-hmm. we are supposed to be God like, mm-hmm. which sounds like a, an anathema to say. Okay. <laughs> no, I, but, I hear But that. God said to Moses, You're going to be God like to Pharaoh and you're going to mm. be God like to my people. So wow. this is where God, He wants us to grow and mature. 
Yeah. So let's not limit ourselves to where he can take us. Wow. You know, wow. I, I'm yeah. definitely gonna <laughs> uh, hop on something that you said, where you said, "Well, your call right now is not to be more humble, but is to dive in further." That really resonates with me because I feel like I am in that pocket. Not to say that I've walked the same yeah. way that you have or the long length of time that you have. It's not nothing like and that. And you shouldn't. You should do it faster than I do. <laughs> right? and, that, and honestly, that's what God told me. He said, you're going to tell, you're going to share with people so they don't have to spend as much time as you spend that's learning. That's wild. Cause I feel Thank like for the cheat code, brother. I feel like a newbie in this, you know, in, in understanding any of this, mm -hmm. but yeah. I feel that God has, he in this last year he's placed one thing after the next in front of me as like here go get trained up in this now okay you're done with that go get trained up in this now and it just keeps happening that's back great back. man yeah and so as i'm in this activating prayer cohort like hearing god's voice spiritual that's authority right. and like chase it chase we're it. we're only in like right. four weeks into the course now and i still got another like four months ahead of me mm. and but I'm believing in it. I'm seeing like, oh God, you're teaching me how I hear your voice. Great. Can can I like sharpen that? And I feel like God is saying yes. Yeah. And then as you're saying that, like the humility thing, I'm like, yeah. I, again, I'm just like you said. I'm not saying, oh, I'm the most humble person in the world. So I got right, like, right. like, like Lord, you know my yeah. heart. Like if anything, I'm more afraid of anything than anything. Like it's right. not yeah, like yeah, oh, right, I can right, do this. Right. Fear, like, anxiety. Know. But it's just like, okay, I know like you've given me the heart of humility. But the, the thing that I'm hesitant is to dive in deeper. But mm -hmm. there's also a part of my heart, and this is the bigger part of my heart, where that, that hesitation is actually very small. It's mm. good, man. The bigger part of my heart is like, let's yeah. go all in. Mm. Let's go all in. And so, um, man, I think this is such a, a blessing. Um, it is, man. And, and yeah, there's, uh, there's so many aspects of this. And like the, the richness of prayer you know, as kids, we are taught like we we pray like for forgiveness and we pray for things that we need. Yeah. And then like we yeah, give yeah. we give God his yeah. props. We give him his yeah. adoration. Yeah. Yeah. Like, God, and, you're good. and we pray for the meals. And we pray yeah. for the meals. And, <laughs> but meal. the intimacy that the mm. Lord like gives us access to him in such a way through prayer. Yes, through his word, through prayer, through like just sitting in silence and solitude and letting him just like just shower over you and i'm learning i'm learning still i'm like god like i don't think i need to always say words when i pray i think i could just sit there sometimes yeah yeah, yeah. and then he's like yeah yeah yeah. Like, you don't yeah. need to keep giving me words yeah. I, don't, <laughs> you know? I don't need to hear that story again yeah, <laughs> yeah. right and yeah, yeah. uh but you know but there's man there's such like sweetness of intimacy that mm. the lord wants uh to have with all of his children amen with yeah. all of his yeah. children so man yeah. it's such one a more piece of encouragement i want to say before you know we get to land the plane here is that i really appreciate someone like yourself to come on you know this platform and someone has been walking with jesus for as long as you have and because and to be so still excited for the lord like that is mm. extremely encouraging to us. And mm. it's really encouraging to our generation and the younger generations mm. to come because something my pastor said once is it was really interesting. And I didn't realize what a cool word he said was when you look at a church and there's more excited old people than young people, mm, you got something there. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. and I good. really that's believe good. that. And because nowadays I'm so thirsty to hear wisdom that I wouldn't mm. have gotten because I haven't been walking with God as long as some of these other guys mm. and these other women. Mm. And when I get to receive that today, that wisdom yeah. today, those dreams today, then I get to just fire in all cylinders, yeah, run in that boldness quicker. And like you said, you're like, I'm trying to just get this word out. I yeah, want yeah. you guys to hear this. And that yeah. Yeah. It's so encouraging for yeah. guys like us. And I just want to mm. encourage you, man, and just oh, thanks, keep man. doing that, My man. My pleasure. Yeah. 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 It's great. It's well, great. John, we call this show Good Service. We uh, love to frequent these amazing restaurants and give good food and good experiences that ultimately mm. create a good services. This is why we keep coming back to these places. And shout out to Ono Hawaiian Barbecue for the Gee. amazing meal today. Good food. Um, but good service can mean different things to different people. Good and service. So what does good service mean to you, John? Uh, this kind of ties it all together. When you discover your, your true identity, you really become another aspect of God's expression of who he is. Just like you see yourself in your children. So good service to me is when I'm truly living out of my identity. 
mm-hmm. and God's truth, God's love. To me, that's the ultimate of being in good service, you know? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that just perfect yeah. Sense. let Jesus flow through me yeah. is another way to say it. Good. Like, uh, You're just serving good. and living how Jesus did. And it's not a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like this beauty in the flow because I'm totally in tune with who I am. Yeah, it's great. I've been created before the world was created. I've been created for this, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as I f- discover it, walk in it, Good service. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's I, love, good. I love that word flow that you use too. Yeah. That makes yeah. Sense. yeah. Um, what is a way that we here or our listening audience can serve you in this time? Well, serve me may, may not be the right word, but if people are interested in receiving inner healing, um, I minister through our church. I go to Vintage Pasadena, which is a great church hey, in, yeah, in that yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but also um, PyHop. Probably the easiest way is our email at PyHop for someone that might be interested in receiving inner healing is mm-hmm. inner healing at pihop.com. Mm. Inner healing at pihop.com. To learn more about, if you want to get a hold of me, uh, deep healing prayer at gmail.com. I also mm. have a website that's not completely done, deep healing prayer.com. Mm. Yeah. Glad to uh, point people in the right direction. Yeah. That's awesome. Check out we'll all that in the show notes, yeah, man. Yeah, we'll put we'll it there. All of that. Yeah. John, thank yeah. you so much for hanging out with us and breaking bread. We appreciate you, man. And for those who are tuning in, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Good Service. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Yeah, peace. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. If you like what we're doing, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, and hit that five-star rating. And make sure you write us a review. Follow us on all of our socials at Good Service Pod on Instagram and TikTok. And make sure you follow us on YouTube and subscribe at Good Service Podcast. Thank you, guys. Peace.